Hello, welcome to another video. This is a bit of a different video to what I normally film. I promise there is at least one book involved, but I am trying to involve a little bit more travel in my content recently and I am going away for my first abroad trip since 2019, so since before Covid, I'm going to Corfu this week and I am so excited. So I thought it might be a fun video idea to do a what's in my bag slash pack my bag with me. I haven't done one of these before but I have everything laid out in front of me here that I'm going to be packing in my bag. I have my bag here that I'll talk to you about in a minute. This is just going to be my hand luggage, this will not be what I have like my clothes in or anything this is just my carry-on onto the plane I have a separate suitcase with everything else in it but I also wanted to add an extra layer to this because I was looking at rucksack reviews to find a bag that would be good for my back and that would fit everything in it in an easy to access way the reason I was looking for this is because I have scoliosis so I have double minor scoliosis which means that my spine is essentially curved double and is in a minor curvature so I haven't ever had surgery to have it corrected but it still really hurts me and it hurts to carry a lot of heavy things on my back. So when I was looking for reviews for bags and just generally looking at different bags that I could use to travel, there wasn't a great deal out there that I was coming across that was helping me as somebody that wanted to find something that people were using out and about with a back condition. So I thought I would make my own video reviewing this bag essentially and looking at it from the perspective of somebody traveling with scoliosis. Just to give you context, usually carrying a handbag on one shoulder hurts my back, so carrying a whole rucksack certainly is going to hurt, however the fact that it's going to be evenly distributed is going to really help. The bag I've picked has lots of different compartments to it so I should be able to continue that even distribution throughout the bag weight as well, I'm hoping. So let me show you the bag. I'm not working on an ad with this bag at all, by the way, I did buy this myself. I just wanted to review it from the perspective of somebody with scoliosis because it wasn't something I saw out there when I was looking at this bag and I thought it might help somebody else. So I thought I would make it myself. So this is the bag. This is the Nordace Sierra One and I bought this for myself with the intention of it being a carry-on travel bag also potentially with the intention of it being something I could use if I was going for a weekend away somewhere as well. It's a pretty decent sized bag. It has so many pockets and I cannot recommend the amount of space inside enough. It's a bit like a TARDIS with the amount of pockets it's got going on in storage systems. It's called a smart backpack and I definitely think it is. It has so many solutions when it comes to packing. I've already practiced the packing once just so I could check where everything would fit. And I was pretty impressed with the amount of pockets available. It feels like it's actually gonna be easy to find things in my bag rather than just doom searching until I hopefully come across what I'm looking for. So I have the little leaflet that came with the bag that just goes over a couple of its highlights. It has vegan leather on the strap. It's lightweight, smart organization. There's an anti-theft pocket. There's a luggage strap, a 15.6 inch laptop compartment, water bottle pocket, USB charging port, quick access compartment, and it's water resistant. And it looks nice as well. I have gone for the green, which I love. So we're gonna be packing this with everything I have on this table in front of me. The big ticket items are gonna be things like my iPad, which there is a dedicated slot in the bag for, also my Nintendo Switch and my book. Granted, I don't need to be bringing a book with me that is this big, however, this is the one that I think I'm gonna be reading at the time of flying. I'm also bringing a Kindle, so I'm doubling up on the books, but that is probably no surprise to anybody that has been to my channel before. So, without further ado, let's attempt to pack this. The only thing that I won't be packing that I will be packing on the day of traveling is my camera, but I'm filming on that at the moment, so that will be going in here, and there is enough space for it, but obviously, filming at the moment so I can't put it in right now. So I'm going to start off with packing my passport. I'm going to put this in the little pouch at the back of the bag. I have this in a Gaston Luger protector just to keep it safe. So this pocket is really easy access and is a decent size to be able to fit your passport, your phone, anything you just want to keep protected. So I'm just going to slot my passport in there and zip it back up. I'm going to be popping my iPad in this big slot at the back here which is padded as well so offers some more back support. I put my iPad in this sleeve just to keep it and the pencils safe. Then in this main compartment I'm going to put quite a lot of my items. This is going to be where the bulk of things go. So there are two big compartments in here. There's this one here which goes all the way down to the bottom of the bag and this one here which covers half the length of the bag. This one is also waterproof and then we have four smaller sized similar sized pockets on the inside. So in the biggest one I'm going to pop in my book. It's in a fairy loot sleeve just to keep it protected. Then I also have my Kindle which I'm going to slide into one of the pockets on the inside as well as my portable charger which I'm going to plug the USB into. This portable charger is just from Amazon. I will try to remember to leave a link down below but it has USB and USB-C ports so it'll be able to charge both my phone, my iPad and my Switch. 
And with this USB cable, I just need to attach it in, and then I have a port on the outside of the bag that I can connect my devices to with the cables that I've got with me. So I'm just gonna pop that in one of the pockets as well. I have a little pouch of cables that I'm just gonna pop my iPhone charger into. I've got the external charger, but I just wanna have this one with me as well, just for my phone, because the external one is also gonna be charging my sister's Nintendo Switch as well. So I'm just gonna slot that in the bottom here. I have an array of medical-esque supplies. I have a couple of plasters, I have some ibuprofen, and I also have some buscapan because IBS, and I also have some hand cream and some tissues, so I'm gonna put these all in the waterproof pocket here. I also have a little supply of sanitary towels and things here, so I'm gonna put these all in a little sanitary bag and also put them in this pocket. I don't think you can ever be too careful with bringing just a couple of just-in-case supplies when you're traveling. I also have my glasses case, so I'm just gonna pop that in one of the pockets. I'm also gonna be bringing my Joby tripod. This is such a good device. It just connects to your camera really easily there. You can bend it over pretty much anything and it will hold the camera gripped onto it. So it's definitely a must for me when traveling and doing film work as well. So I'm gonna be bringing this with me. I also have my purse, which I pretty much forget about because I use everything on my watch or on my phone now, but I figured this is probably a smart idea to bring it, so I'm just gonna pop this into one of the little pockets inside. And finally for this pocket, I have my Steel Series wireless headphones. These connect up to my Switch and also to my iPad. I think they're the Steel Series 9. I would rather have a case for them, but I don't have one. So I'm just gonna hope that this bag protects them because they fit pretty perfectly here and the zip still has enough room to do up over them. Now, what I haven't shown you yet is the side pockets on this bag. There's pockets either side of the front of the bag. These are probably one of my favorite bits because of how easy access they are, but also how many more pockets there are. So on this one here, we have three pockets on the inside. So these would fit snacks. They just fit little bits and bobs that you just wanna keep in one place. Cables, for example, there is so much storage space in this bag. So on this side, I'm going to be putting my waterproof rain cover for my bag. I have this for two reasons. One, you never know when you're gonna get caught in a rainstorm and I have some things in here that I would rather not get wet. Even though the bag is water resistant, I just wanna make sure that I'm absolutely protected. Also two, this does fit under the seats on an airplane. And if you cover it with this, then you can put your feet on it as a footrest and not worry about damaging the fabric of the bag. So I'm just gonna pop this in the bottom pocket here. I'm also gonna put my Nintendo Switch in this side pocket here. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it does definitely all fit. And on the other side of the bag, we have another side pocket, what? So in here, I'm just gonna pop my sunglasses in. I do have them in a pouch, but there is a pouch here as well, but I just feel like they're safer in this one. And I'm also gonna clip my headphones to this little attachment here just so I know where they are at all times because these are the things that I lose the most in my bag. And finally, I'm just gonna pop my water bottle in the side here and we're good to go. Okay, now I've actually got the bag on. It certainly is heavy. However, it does feel like it's well distributed. There's padded straps here. The back against my back is padded as well for the laptop protection. And generally it does feel bulky, but I feel like it's okay. I don't feel like I'm gonna whack into somebody and knock over a stall full of expensive glass items, for example. I would also add that I don't necessarily have to bring all of the items I've packed in this bag. For example, that chunky book, I could pick a smaller book to bring with me. This is probably me pushing the bag to its limit just to see what it's capable of. But I would say that fit fairly well. I don't feel like the bag's about to explode or break. It feels sturdy. It feels like it's holding everything. But how will it stand the test of actually being used and being used with scoliosis? Will it hurt my back? It probably will hurt my back because it's very rare for me to find something that doesn't. I would have rather had something that had straps around the front of it. I think that the Sierra 2 does have those straps. However, there were very mixed reviews for that bag saying that some of the design steps had gone backwards rather than forwards. So I did decide to get the Sierra 1, which I'm hoping is a good decision, but I'm, I'm liking it so far. Now I just need to see how it holds up at the airport. Hello, I am back from holiday, which means I am back with my final thoughts on the Nordace Sierra bag. So at the start of this video, I went through all the features of this bag, all the different pockets. I went through packing it for my trip to Corfu. I have since been to Corfu, had an amazing time. We'll have a travel vlog for the whole trip, which I will link 
up here if it's live by now. It was great, it was fantastic. And this bag was my carry-on on the plane. Now I have scoliosis, which is something that was really important to me when purchasing a bag that properly supported my back and gave me the best chance at not having as high a level as pain with my backache. It's always going to hurt me. I think it's inevitable that I'm going to get backache at some point. But this bag, I have to say, was a pretty pleasant experience. It was very comfortable to carry. And whilst obviously the weight of the bag isn't gonna change, it was distributed throughout the bag quite well, I felt. It felt like there was a space for everything. The padded straps really helped because around my shoulder area, I didn't feel any discomfort. It was much more in my lower back, which is where I usually feel the most pain from my scoliosis. So generally, I would say for me, from the perspective of somebody with scoliosis, this was a pretty decent bag experience. One of the things that I think really helped me, especially on our way to Corfu, because at the airport we had quite a weight to check in our baggage. So we have the luggage strap on the back here that allowed me to put this bag on top of my suitcase so that I wasn't feeling like I had the weight of it on me the whole time. And I think the difference between just resting your bag against your suitcase versus actually having this strap on it is that it wasn't gonna fall off as I moved the suitcase around the aisles that we were queuing in. So it felt very secure. It felt like it was a safe bag. The passport bag at the pocket at the back of the bag was very helpful as well. Really easy access. And I liked the fact that I had it on me constantly and knew exactly where my passport was at all times. Also, this pocket with the drink was ridiculously helpful because again, knew my drink was there at all times and could easily reach for it whilst the bag was still on my back. Just generally, I feel like this bag held strong very well. My favorite feature about it is the amount of pockets there is. It's not that the storage space is particularly mind blowing. It's a pretty big bag, but I didn't think it fit any more than another bag I could have taken wood of, but because there's a pocket for everything, it just means you can find everything so much easier. And when you're squished into a tiny plane seat and you don't have much leg room and you're just trying to rummage around your bag to find something, knowing which pocket it's in is a big help. This bag as well had no issue fitting under the seat of the plane, so I had it with me at all times throughout the journey. I also used the charging feature, so there's a little USB port on the side of the bag. Here it is. I have a portable charger that's plugged in on the inside of this bag with a USB, and then I have my USB cable coming out here to charge my phone, and that worked really well as well. And was just nice and easy and convenient for the way back home to just have that charger plugged in and able to do that whilst I was traveling and not have to think about carrying a block charger around in my hand or my pocket or something. Obviously I'm singing this bag's praises. Did it have any negative sides though? I didn't really find I had any issues with the bag apart from maybe the one smallest thing in that I think if it was a tiny weeny bit wider that would have helped a little bit because the pocket spaces, once you've got everything in the pockets, does reduce the space you've got in the main big zip pocket, this one here. So this one in here, you've got lots of different pockets inside here. How many have we got? Six? Six different pockets inside of here. And if you've got something in all of those different pockets, it does make it quite tight to put anything in the main whole area of this giant pocket. So I had my Switch headphones, my over there headphones, which are obviously quite a chunky big item. And once everything was in here and those were in here as well, it did make it quite a tight fit because of how bulky all of the pockets made the space taking up. So I suppose if you didn't have the pockets, you could rearrange it in a different way to stop the bulk all being in one area. However, I would rather have the pockets than not. So I definitely would say that's like a really minor thing. It just meant it was a little bit of a tight fit at times. I thought it would fit a bit more in it with ease. However, I would be intrigued to see how this does if I was using it for a weekend away and had just clothes in it, for example, because I had a lot of tech bits. I had a lot of small items that I needed to get out quite regularly. And then I had a couple of big bulky items. So I'd be interested to see how this goes with just kind of clothing or an overnight bag type of thing. So yeah, I generally was very impressed with this bag. I think it did a really good job. I would definitely recommend it. As a perspective of somebody with scoliosis, it didn't make my back pain any worse, which is always a big thing that I look for. I wouldn't say that anything is gonna make my back pain better. However, some things do aid me in terms of the features they had. So for me, those features being the padded straps, the back is also fairly comfortable, and the luggage strap so I could put it over my suitcase and not have it on my back. Also the fact that everything was accessible, I can't beat the pocket space, is probably my favorite thing about this bag because everything is there, you know exactly where it all is, and it just feels very practical and very well made. It's definitely made with the user in mind. So yeah, that was my, my little field test for this bag. I will be continuing to use it for travel and for work. I'm interested to see how it does fare with some weekend trips and how much it fits in because I have some pack packaging cubes that will help me organize the space within the bag. So hopefully 
it can fit quite a bit clothing wise because obviously that is going to be something that can be squished down versus the technology which really couldn't but generally it was a good pick i'm really glad i went for it i hope this video has been somewhat helpful i just wanted to use something that was a bit more of an in-depth look at the bag and also a chat about how it worked with my scoliosis as well thank you so much for watching this video if you did enjoy please do give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any packaging tips for bags like this subscribe to see more of my face on your feed you can also find a link down to my patreon below and also my digital shop thank you so much for watching keep smiling and stay positive